Well, hey, welcome to our Good Friday online service. My name is Chris. It's my friend Lisa, hey, and we, we work here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And that's why we're on camera. <laughs> that's why they have us in this room, in this space, talking to you. And we are going to walk you through what it is to be a part of an online Good Friday gathering. We've done mm -hmm. an online gathering for a couple of years yep. now. Uh, we're kind of forced Some to. Some was because we had to. Yeah, yep. kind of forced to a little bit. But now there's something that we're doing for our online community. It's such a great opportunity to do that. And it's it's mm -hmm. always fun to hang out with you, my dear friend. Thank you. You as well. Ah, stop it. You know, <laughs> actually, you can go a little further. Humble brag. Yeah, humble yeah. brag a little bit. So, you know, a Good Friday is an important day in the church calendar um, alongside the entire Holy Week. Mm -hmm. Question for you, my friend. Yeah. What, when you look back at your life, like what has mm -hmm. Good Friday meant to you? Like what are some Good Friday stories that you have about your, and in, in, mm -hmm. in through your life? Interestingly, when I think back though, as like a child, I would say, I don't really remember Good Friday. I remember Easter Sunday, okay. but I don't okay. remember Good Friday. Okay. I know we, what we, happened. We, okay, we got, we got, we got, beep, beep, we got back yeah. on track. Of, like, like, explain, like, how, like, you don't remember Good Friday. Because it's, it's good. Like, the name good is in the name. Yes. Like, like I'm sure we went to church. Okay. I'm sure we probably did something with grandparents, but I just remember Easter Sunday as like the excited to wake up, mm. look for chocolate that was hidden around the house or in the yard, grandparents there for breakfast, wearing new dresses or new clothes to church, um, and there being this bunny figurine that's like a family <laughs> heirloom. Well, not a figurine, it's just like a soft bunny okay, figurine sure. <laughs> that would sit on the sure. front table. Maybe sounds creepy, but that was like a memory <laughs> of mine on like Easter Sunday. Okay. So Good Friday, I wouldn't say it didn't matter, but I just don't really remember it. Okay, How fair. about you growing up? So we didn't go to church mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger, but we still observed Good Friday. And by observed, I mean like for some reason, I always had to have fish on okay. Good Friday. And so we would have, like, no matter yeah, what was Friday. happening, like, we would, we would, um, Jesus of Nazareth would be on TV. Like, I don't know if you remember the, the, the old movie, those of you who are of a certain age. <laughs> so we would watch that movie on television, six part series, and we'd have to have <laughs> okay. fish sticks and tartar sauce. So I would dread Good Friday because I had no religious background in it. I just knew that it meant <laughs> that because someone died, I had to have fish sticks and, and tartar sauce. And it was not sauce. a meal you were looking for. And it was to. not, okay. I, it, like, like, if you're asking an eight year old kid if you can choose between between a, a cheeseburger from McDonald's and <laughs> fish sticks and tartar sauce, mm -hmm. you're 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 good to go cheeseburger. <laughs> and so my dad and my dad would never really explain why. Uh, it, so it's kind of like, why are we meal. doing this? So right. like like he had the opportunity to share the gospel with me, and he was kind of like, this is what we're supposed to do because <laughs> of Jesus. And so like that was my that was my Good Friday experience. Now we're we're older, we're just a little bit, just, just a, a tiny tad, bit, just a tad older, right? Um, and we both um, serve in a church. Mm -hmm. We both serve, serve in, this, in this sort of space. So what does Good Friday look like and feel for you mm. now? I would say Good Friday itself is a day of part of a longer story because um, I'd say in my adult years, celebrating or marking and exploring the entire Holy Week mm. has become something that I've more leaned into. A few years ago, I went to an Anglican church for Monday, Thursday, which is the day before Good Friday. Right. And really beautiful, like that. everything gets <laughs> taken down, like that's like, um, makes the church look pretty essentially. And everything's then bare mm. because it's the night that Jesus is betrayed. And so it's this interesting way and also washing of people's feet happens on that day. So it's like, Things that expand Good Friday and Easter into a longer reflection for me is helpful. Yeah. At least for me, I, I found that. that. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I think same same sort of idea. Like I have a book that I read um, every year mm -hmm. during Holy Week. It's a devotional book that I um, I found um, just walking through a bookstore one year. Okay, you weren't looking. Yeah, I was, I, yeah, I wasn't yeah, yeah. like, like, I need a Holy Week book. <laughs> no, I, just, I went and I, I found this book and I have incorporated that into my life. and. I've worked in a church for 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And so every Good Friday, I was either sitting in a congregation wearing a dark suit, mm -hmm. looking amazing, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, someone's like, you're really mad that I said amazing about myself, but it's fine. Um, you know, like I- Where's you know, your suit today? Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's at the cleaners. <laughs> um, or I would be leading worship and mm -hmm. you know, you, there's a certain amount of Good Friday songs that you would sing yeah. and you would lead and that sort of thing. And the partaking of communion, being in community, and reminding yourself of this bittersweet day that is Good Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it took someone's bitter, took Jesus giving himself to allow us to have the sweetness of, of 
life in him and life through him. And so it's always been this sort of like, it's a tug and it's a push and pull, it's tug and a, and a push to be able kind of to enjoy it, mm. recognizing that it took someone's sacrifice to be able to have that sort of Good Friday experience, which, right. you know, like the, the juxtaposition of it being a Good Friday, yes. knowing that it had to be someone's worst day. Yep. And even if it's like day. the word enjoy, like, but just to be, yeah. be present in it or recognize the importance of it, whether that's enjoyment yeah. or not, might be uh, up for debate. But yeah, just the importance of the day. Yeah. So what about you? You're you who are watching us and you're watching us kibitz a little bit. <laughs> like, why don't you put in the chat right now, whether you're on Discord or whether on YouTube, what has Good Friday meant for you? What has that sacrifice meant for you? Mm. Take a moment and write that down in the chat. Observe that. We're going to be going to a couple of songs in a few moments. So while these songs are being sung, why don't you take a moment to write down in the chat and really interact with one mm. another what Good Friday has meant for you. Maybe you're able to relate to some of our uh, our youth experiences or our experiences now mm. as, as grown-ups. Can we... Cars those grown-ups? Yeah, I guess so. We'll do that. Right, like maybe it's, whether it's back in the day or whether it's right now, share that and interact with one another as these songs are, are being sung. I've been strong.
Thanks, worship team. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I love singing. Yeah. It's just such one of my favorite things to do, like in, in a church environment, mm -hmm. is to, to sing songs. You don't get to do that in any other space, right? Like, what's your go-to Jesus-y, Good mm. Friday sort of tune? Mine, mine is yeah. um, in Christ alone. Like that's okay. my, that's my go-to. Like that's my banger. That's my jam. What's, what's what, what are you? I probably lean towards like a more traditional hymn or. Stop trying to be so cool. Like, like I'm traditional. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, the were you there when they crucified Oh, you mean Lord. like the were you there <laughs> when they crucified my, that, that one? Do not ruin my song. It makes me cry. The like whoa whoa woes. Oh. Sometimes it causes me, like that part makes oh, me so actually feel weepy. So it does actually cause you to tremble. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Yes. Like hopefully for you, song. hopefully for you in, in the chat, you've been able to talk with one another. Maybe now you're talking about your own favorite songs. I'm not sure what's happening where, where, where you guys are, but maybe you're talking about that stuff as well. And the beauty about worship is that we can do that in many forms. We yeah. can do that through singing. We can do that through serving. We can also do that through giving. Yeah, that's right. And we want to just take this opportunity to remind our friends, you, on the, uh, a live stream, that giving is an important way that we do partner with what God is doing through our church wherever we are. We know that you come from all places mm -hmm. um, that are watching us. So would you head to themeetinghouse.com slash give to give today to the work of The Meeting House. And also while you're doing that, or keeping that in the back of your mind, we are gonna be marking a time together of taking communion. We are? We are. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so part of our Good Friday together. So you wanna grab something to eat, maybe it's bread, a cookie, a biscuit, a cracker, use your imagination, fish sticks. We're not, that's no. so not cool. <laughs> and something to drink, because <laughs> we're gonna be doing communion together. I share that with you in confidence. Yes. <laughs> and and while you're doing that, our friend Laura is going to be bringing our Good Friday teaching. So as you're going to do that, you can do multiple things at once. You can be listening and receiving while also going and getting your stuff for communion. So we'll see you back in a little bit. Good morning. We find ourselves here on Easter weekend coming out of our Leviticus series where we have been talking about God's pursuit of his people and how God put so many things in place in order to draw his people into right relationship with him. And it moves us beautifully to the story of Easter where we focus our attention as a church on our sacrificial savior who did everything to show his love for us, to be in relationship with us in an ongoing way. But before we get to the celebratory part of Easter, we find ourselves in this space of Good Friday. And as a child growing up in the church, my dad was a pastor and I remember very distinctly not enjoying uh, the space of Good Friday quite as much. I was always very impatient about Good Friday, not really looking forward to it, wishing that we could rush ahead um, to Easter Sunday. And the associations in my mind are needing to wear dark colors and singing songs that were more serious and having to be quieter as a child, um, where Easter Sunday in my mind was associated with fun new dresses and bright colors and lots of flowers uh, and seemed like a better use of our time as we gathered in that way. And although that was the way that I thought as a child, as I have come to be an adult, as I have lived different seasons of life, I have come to really value the sacred space that Good Friday offers. I have come to realize that when there is space for places that feel heavier, for places that feel harder and darker in some ways, that that is also a space that is good, that it is a space that is needed, that it is a space that is part of our ongoing relationship with our God who loves us so much. So we wanna spend some time there this morning together in the space of Good Friday, in what it means for us, in what it feels like, in what God wants to show us and teach us in this kind of a space. So we're gonna turn our attention to one of the gospel accounts in the book of Luke of the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. And we're not gonna read all of these verses, but if you can bring the story to mind, the picture to mind, we know and are familiar with some of the things that people are feeling as they go through this story. There are feelings of deep sorrow. There are giant questions where people are wondering, what is happening? How can this be? There is pain. There is suffering. There is betrayal. There's cruelty. There is death. 
in this story. And when we arrive to verse 44, we also see that as we walk through the next few verses about the death of Jesus on the cross, that there is also great darkness. Let's read there for a minute together. By this time, it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshiped God and said, surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. And so I wonder if you can find yourself here. If you think about the pieces of this story and what people were experiencing, what people were feeling, can you find a space in your own life where you have felt deep grief? where you have experienced pain, suffering, betrayal, where it has felt like great darkness or even felt like death. Because we do a lot in our lives to stay away <laughs> from spaces that feel like this. We don't want to be there. Of course we don't. It's not anything that we would choose for ourselves or for people that we love. And so we do a lot to avoid feeling these things. We deny it. We try to move past it quickly. We try to busy ourselves so that we don't notice, distract ourselves, numb ourselves from feeling these things that are heavy and hard. And while that can be a really natural human reaction in certain seasons, I think that some of the lesson and teaching of Good Friday is to remind us that in those spaces that feel so heavy and hard are also places where God desires to meet us, where he is at work, where he is fully present and understanding what we're walking through. And sometimes what happens is that when we try to skip over the places that are hard and heavy, when we deny that those are things that we're actually living and feeling, we also miss out on the ways that God wants to meet us and be with us and communicate his love for us right in the middle of those very heavy and hard places. It's not that God wants those hard seasons and heavy places for us. It's not part of the story of what he would desire for us, but he does promise us that he is present with us in those places and that he is alongside us, with us in the midst, showing us the way through. Sometimes what I have experienced when I'm in those seasons full of questions, full of doubt, full of confusion, full of heaviness, I feel like I'm getting it wrong in terms of my faith, in terms of my understanding about who God is. I have struggled with this feeling that if I'm feeling unsure or afraid, that maybe my faith just isn't strong enough. Maybe I'm not putting my faith in Jesus fully if I'm feeling this way. It feels like we're failing. It can feel like we're far away from God. And I feel like, again, the, the beautiful goodness of Good Friday as part of the Easter story is saying, no, this is also a part of how I'm working. This is also a part of the story of my presence with you. And so we don't have to be afraid of when we're feeling that way. We don't have to hide from it or deny it. But as we open our hands with the way that we are really feeling and experiencing those hard seasons, crying out to God for help, that he meets us in the middle of it and uses that as part of the story of us knowing him more fully and also being able to share his heart with people around us. Let's turn back now to another account of the death of Jesus. We're going to flip to the book of Mark for a very similar passage. But we want to see how Jesus also shows us what it's like to be in this space. So in Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 33, we have the same description of darkness coming across the whole land until three o'clock. 
Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? In the middle of his own suffering, Jesus cries out for help. This is our Savior, our Lord, who knows what it's like to taste death, who knows what it's like to feel alone, to feel full of questions and confusion, to cry out to God to be alongside him in the very midst of darkness and death and loss. And we know that because of Easter, because of the death and the coming resurrection of Jesus, that we live in the truth that God makes a way through these places. So he's with us in the midst and he knows the way through to new life, to new hope, to new promise. So just as Jesus just as Jesus has cried out to God for help, that we also can be in that place. Earlier in his ministry, Jesus teaches as part of the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes about how when we find ourselves in places where we feel poor in spirit, when we are feeling fully our need for God, that this is when we're so close to the kingdom that this is a giant part of how we learn God's heart for us. In the places where we feel like we absolutely cannot continue and do it on our own, it doesn't feel like a place we wanna be, but it is a place where we can meet and know God's abundance, God's provision, God's faithfulness in ways that we can't really access, we can't really touch and experience in the same way when we are feeling and living in spaces uh, where we have it all together, where we're feeling okay in our own strength. In our places of need, we move closer to God. He's with us in the midst, and these are good things, good things to celebrate. In my own life, in the last couple of years, I have experienced this in, in new ways. I think there have been different seasons where I have known my need for God deeply, but in the last couple of years, I have lived through um, a diagnosis of cancer and then walking through uh, treatment and surgery and recovery. And like nothing that I have experienced in my life before, this definitely brought me to the end of myself in all kinds of ways. I experienced pain pain bodily, I experienced giant questions, I experienced confusion um, and suffering. And there was a lot about this season that did feel a lot closer to death than it did to life. But I also walked the experience of the goodness of this story of Good Friday, like we have been talking about. Whereas I was in these places that felt like death, I learned in new ways that God was there with me. When I felt like I was opening my hands with like nothing to offer <laughs> except for suffering and pain, I found over and over again that God, God met me there fully with his love for me, with his provision for me, and even more than that, that he was able to use me through that season as I was honest about the questions that I was asking, about the things that I was walking, that he was able to use that to also show his heart and his love to other people, just in amazing ways. Um, when I felt like I was offering nothing but brokenness, Jesus was present and able to use that to show life and light to me as well as to other people. He was fully present in the middle of pain and questions and helped me to move through those places of heaviness towards new life again. And so wherever we find ourselves today, whether you can uh, immediately think of a season that's similar where you have experienced something like this, or you can't, nothing in particular comes to mind. We find ourselves at the place in the story where the celebration of Easter and all that it means to us as followers of Jesus is both now and not yet. So we know that the story doesn't end with Good Friday and these pieces, but that Easter Sunday and the fullness of the resurrection has also happened, that it's finished and that God is victorious. And so the fullness of God's kingdom, of God's presence is here now. We live in that victory, in that freedom, in the truth of that resurrection life. 
And at the same time, because of where we are in history, because of where we are in the story, it's also not yet fully realized. We still live in a world that is broken. We still live in a life that is affected by sin and by death and by darkness. But I think the beautiful reminder of Good Friday is that that is not separate from our experience of God. We don't have to move away from those places in order to know God or in order to be used by God, but that both of these pieces, death and life, darkness and light, despair and hope, all of this is within who God is and how he works. And so wherever we find ourselves, or if it's a mixture of both, which it often is, we can bring it fully to Jesus, expecting that he will meet us in the middle and that he will use us for his glory and his purposes. Earlier in our Leviticus series, we referenced some verses in the book of Hebrews. I just want to turn to as we conclude. Jimmy was talking about the priesthood and the priesthood of all believers. And we read these verses together from Hebrews chapter 4. And I just want to draw our attention back there this morning because it connects so beautifully to what we've been talking about with Good Friday. So Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 14, says this. So then, since we have a high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of, of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Jesus has been in these spaces and he says to us again and again that we can come exactly as we are with our weaknesses, with our heaviness, in our need, and that in that space that might feel like darkness or death to us, that he will meet us fully and that he will walk with us towards light and towards life. We can be sure that the hope and the promise and the victory and the life that is through is there for us in Jesus as well. We can have certainty in that. But first, we don't need to rush the space of Good Friday. We can know that he is with us in the middle of those spaces as well. And we can be deeply thankful that God meets us exactly where we are in all parts. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for the space of Good Friday. And however it makes us feel, God, if we feel at rest in these spaces, knowing that there is room for our need. Lord, we thank you for that. If it makes us feel uncomfortable, Jesus, or unsure, or like we'd rather rush through, Lord, we know that you meet us there too. And so God, as we continue to listen to your spirit, as we continue to pay attention to the things that rise up in us when we talk about our need or these spaces of darkness and death, God, will you help us to open our hands to you and to cry out to you to come and be with us where we really find ourselves. We thank you for how you meet us exactly where we are and for how nothing is dark to you because you are light and love itself. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you have done to show your love to us, Jesus, to make a way for us to enter into new life alongside you. We love you, Lord. We pray these things in your name. Amen. The Gospel of Luke says, When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the God, kingdom of God comes. He took the loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he said the same with the cup after supper, saying, this cup is poured out for you. It is the new covenant in my blood. 
We heard from our friend Laura that we have the opportunity given to us because of Jesus to boldly approach mm -hmm. him, to come to him with everything that we are, everything that we carry, knowing that he has the ability to handle all of it because of what he did for us on, on the cross. And so now we're about to participate in communion mm -hmm. together. And maybe you're watching this online today and you're on your own. You're mm -hmm. watching this by yourself, whether it's on a phone or computer or wherever else. And you can still come boldly to Jesus today. Because you're on your own, maybe it means boldly is praying out loud. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's sharing that sorrow that you might be going through out loud or sharing the joy that you're going through out loud. But the ability to come boldly is available to you right now. That's awesome. Yeah, and being bold as well, if you're with other folks watching this, family and friends, that this is an opportunity to boldly share mm -hmm. this opportunity to come to God together and you know, tell and remind each other, this is the body and blood of Christ for you because he loves you. It's a pretty bold statement to yeah. remind one another of that thing. And that's an opportunity to do that where we receive the elements from one another. That might be another thing that you can do if you're together. You serve one another the elements yeah. as you're as you're receiving communion. And we're, we're gonna do that. We're gonna try yeah. that together too. We're gonna serve one another. And so here's your piece of bread. Thank you. Mm, this, is, <laughs> this is mine. Yeah. And why don't we do that together? Why don't we uh, remember the bruised and, and beaten body of Jesus, the nail scarred hands and feet of mm -hmm. Jesus that was bruised and beaten for us. And we do this and we remember mm -hmm. him today. Let's participate together. And like I just read, after the meal, he gave a cup mm -hmm. to his friends. Thank you. And said, drink this in remembrance of me. Let's do that together. Let's sing together. All these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered, mended and whole, empty handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free. I've been set
Well, it's been a great privilege to be able to spend Good Friday with you, to be able to sing and to learn out of the scriptures mm -hmm. and to pray and to observe communion together and to remember together the, the beauty and the pain that is the sacrifice of Jesus and to be able to accept that and to take that into our hearts, into our lives. And Lisa, it's always, it's always a privilege for me to be friends with you and to be able to do this sort of things with you too. Thanks, it's just Chris. always fun just to be able to Ditto. hang out this way. Ditto, okay, <laughs> let's go with that. We, and this is a crazy weekend for, for the church. Like it's a, for the, the global church to be able to observe this weekend. What does this weekend look like for you? Yeah, it ends up being full, but fun as well. So lots of food being shared with different family and friends and church folks as well, hanging out together. Uh, hello, downtown crew. Toronto crew specifically, downtown Toronto. I know there's a downtown Hamilton. Anyway, it's gonna include fish and chips, by the way. That's not cool, bro. So, yeah, That's enjoy cool. your foods. Not cool, bro. But for you, our online community, we have such an exciting weekend planned out. This Saturday at 10 o'clock via YouTube, we are going to be having an online Holy Saturday devotional. One of our fellow staff members, Jenny, she's gonna be just bringing a thought of what it means to be in that in-between. Mm. There's Good Friday that we've talked about today. There's Easter Sunday, which we know so well. But then there's this sort of this gray area that's Holy Saturday, this day of not knowing, of un un unsuredness, if you mm. will. And Jane's gonna be speaking into that. And so we look forward to hanging out with you this Saturday, 10 o'clock on YouTube. And then Easter Sunday, uh, online, 10 o'clock again. We look forward to just be able to worship and sing and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It's gonna be a great time. Yeah, very fun. And we're gonna leave you with these words as we part today. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and through grace has given us eternal comfort and good hope. Would he give us comfort and strengthen our hearts in every good work and word. Amen. Have a good one, friends.